Bitcoin is now facing its 12th week to the downside. Bitcoin going on an extreme downside rampage, reaching the 200 week moving average, which is a very historic moving average for Bitcoin. If we're looking at all the past cycles for Bitcoin, we found the bottom in the 2015 crash around the 200 week SMA. If we go to 2018, we found the bottom at the 200 week SMA there as well. And if we're at the current cycle now, we see that we are touching the 200 week SMA. Well, is this gonna be the bottom or do we have more downside to go? Are we gonna bottom out here or is this time different with more downside coming? That is the question right now. And a lot of that is gonna to have to do with the S&P 500. In 2018, when Bitcoin reached that uh, $3,100 level right here in 2018, the S&P also touched the 200 week SMA together, right? They both hit the same moving average at the exact same point. But this time is a little different with the S&P still about six or 7% away from reaching the 200 week SMA. So it looks like the S&P could actually still see more downside while Bitcoin is at the historic 200 week SMA, which may mean that this time could be different. We may see slight prices below the 200 week before finding an actual bottom here. And there's a lot of things working against Bitcoin. First of all, we had the Terra Luna debacle, which caused a lot of downside pressure on the markets. And now we're seeing uh, crypto lender Celsius risking insolvency. And they announced, the Celsius announced that they're pausing withdrawals and swaps and transfers between accounts. And we're seeing that people, you know, commenting here saying that they have USDC in their account and they want to repay their loan for the margin call, but they can't do it, right? So we're in a very bad spot here. Um, you know, just one bad news after the next. And what they said, what Celsius said was that due to extreme market conditions, they're announcing that they're pausing all swaps, withdrawals and transfers. And a lot of analysts are saying that pausing withdrawals, especially considering these market conditions, it's fair to say that they are risking insolvency. So we have tons of bad news coming out alongside this downside pressure you know, coupled with the correlation with the stock market, the S&P also seeing a lot of downside. And on top of that, we see that the Euro is nearing parity with the dollar. And we have not seen the Euro fall below the equivalent of one USD for a long, very, very long time, right? This is the Euro to USD chart. So, you know, the world is in turmoil, stock market is down, Bitcoin's following, you know, all this bad news coming out of the crypto industry, tons, hundreds of millions of dollars of liquidations, and also the Fed looking to raise interest rates, the stock market falling, just tons of bad things going against us right now in the markets overall. So we're gonna be discussing all of this and more in today's video. <laughs> If you guys haven't already, definitely smash the like button and subscribe to this channel. So recently on this channel, we were looking for a possible relief rally for Bitcoin, which of course did not happen. If we're looking at the daily chart. Uh, we saw that Bitcoin had, you know, one, two, three attempts at a break of resistance here on the daily chart, all of which failed and led to a very, very quick rejection. Now, if we're looking at Bitcoin on the weekly chart, the 200 SMA pulled up and we compare this to the S&P 500, we can see that over here in 2018, Bitcoin bottomed at that 200 week SMA. And at that exact point, this purple line, the S&P 500 also bottomed right at the same exact point. And the S&P 500 was also at the time bouncing off of its 200 week moving average. But if we're looking now at the S&P, we are ways away from that, right? We're still six or 7% away from seeing the S&P reach the 200 week moving average. And Bitcoin is already there, right? If we go to the weekly, Bitcoin has already reached it. And if the S&P, and if this is some kind of indication that maybe the S&P does have more room to move down, then that means that Bitcoin likely is going to be breaking below the 200 week SMA. That is quite possible at this point. With all the bad news mounting for crypto and the you know global economic environment, seeing continued moves down below that 20K level is possible. 
Though, if we do get down there, I think that we probably wouldn't spend all too much time below 20K. We're starting to see people like the CEO of Kraken, Jesse Powell, say that he's gonna go all in on Bitcoin if we drop to 20K. And Jesse said in this quote that he spent half of his available capital on Bitcoin in July at 30K. And he told himself that he'd have to go all in at 20K. So a lot of big money interest, I think, was is going to step in if we see prices below that 20K psychological level, right? But it doesn't really mean that we're out of the woods. Um, even if they do step in, we're likely going to be seeing a lot of sideways action, right? Historically, Bitcoin bottoms at the 200 week. But what I was saying on Twitter was that, you know, the 200 week isn't going to be of much help if the stock market just continues to fall right? Because the correlation is heavy, right? So if the S&P does see more downside to reach its 200 week moving average, that could mean that Bitcoin would look to see prices just below 20K. If you're looking left at this current range, there's not much support right there on that pump zone above 20,000. So seeing a test down to the psychological 20K level, right? That 2017 high, seeing a test down to that is possible and maybe even seeing slightly lower prices, maybe even reaching the 786 at like 17,800, a wick down to those levels, and then a lot of sideways action, I think is, is what's more likely than anything. If we're looking at Bitcoin's downtrend line on the weekly, the, these you know macro lower highs, which give us a clear trajectory for this downtrend, whether Bitcoin bottoms here at the 200 week or we end up going lower towards 20K or just below 20K, before finding a bottom, it's likely that we're not gonna be able to actually exit this downtrend until this area here, which is the end of the year, 2023, when Bitcoin, you know, we're probably gonna end up trading sideways and not actually exiting the downtrend until later at the end of the year. So we're probably gonna be stuck at low levels for quite some time. It is very, very unlikely, or I mean, you, you know, for us to just get some kind of instant recovery. There's a lot of people out there drawing, you know, Elliott waves saying that Bitcoin is about to go on the next wave up, you know, without actually considering the halving, right? The halving is usually the most important thing for bull runs for Bitcoin. And what's likely is that we're going to be trading sideways before even exiting the downtrend into 2023. And then it could take another entire year before we actually find some kind of recovery in this market. So the positive news is that we have time to accumulate. And the positive news is that this is the area of maximum opportunity. If you look at Bitcoin historically, um, you know, at these low points, right? Whenever we get to the 200 week SMA, what is it? What does it mean, right? Right there, guys, the 200 week in 2015, that was the area of maximum opportunity before major upside. If we look at 2018, that was the area of maximum opportunity before major upside, right? That 200 week SMA. And whether we bottom at the 200 week or slightly lower, this is likely going to be the area of maximum opportunity before major upside in the coming years, in the coming years. But until then, we likely are gonna be spending a lot of time at lower levels to create a stronger base of support before truly getting a major bull market. Especially if we're gonna be entering a recession, we may already be in a recession, then it's likely that we're not gonna see a recovery for quite some time. And also talking about the Ethereum situation here, uh, where we're playing out almost the same exact type of market structure that we did back here, where we have a sort of head and shoulders type top with a break below the macro upward sloping trend line to get that major downside action before finding a bottom. I mean, it looks just like that 2018 cycle, guys. It's almost a spinning image. And the Daily Hoddle wrote an article about me in the post I made on Twitter, Ethereum capitulation imminent, uh, talking about this chart that I posted, right? And this was posted back when Ethereum was just below um, 2K. Um, and this is, you know, that Ethereum fractal has now really started to play out um, a lot more, right? What this chart that I posted is showing is that when you get below the 128 week SMA for Ethereum, like in 2018 there, we saw 140 days before actually getting a true bottom of some kind. And over those 140 days, we went down and then sideways. And if you're looking over here at where we are now, Ethereum is falling below the 128 week SMA, 
So it could be literally 140 days or so if this fractal plays out of sideways and down before Ethereum actually bottoms and comes back up, right? It's, it's, it's just, you know, expecting that sideways action is crucial here. You know, don't be looking for any kind of instant recovery that's unlikely in this environment. And also the Daily HODL posted this chart that I posted on Twitter as well, which shows the line chart for Bitcoin and where this macro upward sloping trend line is truly sitting which is just below that 20K level, right? So Bitcoin does have room to move down and maintain an upward sloping trend line kind of around that 20K level, right? So yeah, there is still a lot of room to move down. We could dip slightly below 20K uh, before the whales kind of step in, right? Around that 20K level. I think we're gonna see a lot of big money interest around that point. And something I said on Twitter today is that we're likely in a recession already, and Bitcoin has never experienced one before. And we should probably expect the unexpected. And what that might mean, expecting the unexpected, that could mean that the 200 week SMA is not the bottom. Could mean that we do go towards that 20K level or slightly lower before um, actually you know, finding some kind of higher low. Again, if we bring up the, if we bring up the line chart here, and you just and you just map out this low to the COVID low on the line chart. You know we do have a lot of room to move down. I mean, from where Bitcoin is currently, that means we still could be going down another twenty five percent or so before reaching that upward sloping trend line and going sideways and recovering into twenty twenty three. Right again, we're probably not going to get out of this downtrend until the end of the year towards twenty twenty three. We got a lot of room. We got a lot of work to do before we actually pop up above that trend line. So we are not out of the woods yet at all, obviously. We got a lot of time to move sideways, a lot of time to potentially see even lower prices if the S&P 500 does not cooperate and continues to move down. But the good news is, is like I was saying before, this area is usually the area of maximum opportunity for the long-term trend. Right. So if you're accumulating at these lows for the next, you know, half year to a year, then likely you'll be set for the next bull run. But just be prepared for potentially more pain to come before hitting some major macro support. Um, even this um, weekly, the, the situation is so bad that the weekly volume signature for Bitcoin on that last low has failed. We're actually going below that now, which is rare to see, though it happens. Um, but we may be looking for tests down closer to this trend line, which again, could be anywhere from you know 15 to 20K or something like that, 15 to 17.8K. It's, it's kind of a rough estimate right there, but this is a potential trend line to be looking at, uh, which may coincide with that previous top right there. That's another one. Uh, but honestly, at this point, it's kind of anyone's guess. I don't want to kind of, I don't want to, I don't want to sit here and act like I don't have it all figured out because clearly things are just not turning out as expected. And I'm just going to expect the unexpected and wait for the confirmations to show up here. A lot of, a lot of negative things unfolding uh, right now for crypto and for the global markets. But yeah, so we'll, we'll just have to wait and see guys. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll talk to you all soon. Thank you.